Badger fans, what's going on? We have a transfer, port, transfer portal, a heavy edition of Locked On Badger. Some key targets come to campus. How important is it is it to recruit your own guys? Keep those guys from leaving for the portal. We got all that and more with Brian Smith on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you for making this your first listen as we continue to talk about the Badgers football basketball recruiting portal. There is a ton going on. Today's episode, as always, when we get Brian Smith on, is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's, let's get Brian in and let's talk transfer portal. Um, Brian, I want to start here because I think last year we, we Badger fans collectively, myself included, we got a little caught up in the excitement of being, of being buyers, right? The Badgers have typically not been like that type of school. We brought in a bunch of guys, four-star quarterbacks, three receivers, um, and a lot of them really didn't make a big contribution for whatever reason. I, I want to start here. What's realistic in, in the portal to fix? Because you and I have talked a ton about the Badgers need help at corner, defensive line, receiver. What's a realistic thought going into the transfer portal this offseason for the Badger fans? Well, I mean, there's a couple ways to look at it. It's it's a little feast or famine because you're bringing in somebody that's not familiar with your campus, just like a recruit. So you don't know how well he's going to assimilate to everything that's going on. You can project and it's probably not that hard with Wisconsin. It's a pretty basic place. They're not looking for frills, but they need guys that tend to be playing positions where they're not necessarily button down guys the end corner receiver they're usually bigger personalities so they're they're going to have to look at a lot of different things we're going to talk about a receiver that fits the bill on all fronts it's the rarest of the rare but there's there's a lot of expectation for them to get somebody but you don't always have to hit the home run with every guy too it's okay to get a backup guy and keep developing your own and build depth there are only like think keon coleman went to florida state obviously dude but how many other receivers walked in somewhere and you're like, wow, he's changing that team. Now they can go to the playoff. There's like one or two of those guys a year, man. Evan Stewart's probably going to go to the transfer portal from AM. and I've been around him. I know stories about him. Zero chance that kid's fitting in at Wisconsin. Zero. But he's as good a player as there's going to be in the portal. So, you, I mean, you got to look at things realistically. So you need to find guys that are going to fit your program. I don't think they're – a program that's going to have as much problems as maybe some other people do. But I also have a very high opinion of the Wisconsin Badgers coaching staff. The offense, based on what it's done in the past, shouldn't be that hard to get receivers and stuff in general. They just need that one guy, though. I mean, I, I, I'm not I'm not concerned about that. And then the edge guys and stuff like that, there's different ways to do it. The receiver thing is the one that worries me the most because one player at receiver that's a special player changes your program in today's world, especially in the offense that they're trying to run. It changes everything you do because it's not like Wisconsin's struggling to get running backs, tight ends, and no linemen. They'll be okay in the middle of the field. They just got to get that dude outside. So look for the Badgers to get some depth, but if they hit the home run at receiver, it could, it could be as good as any team in the country in the portal because it's really about the top end guy. Well, and speaking of the top end guys, is it realistic? You and I have talked about this, and I know in the past you've, you've said it's hard, really hard to do this, and I think I understand why, but is it realistic for the Badgers to find a difference-making defense alignment that can, that can hit the quarterback in the portal? Yeah, you can. Um, some kids in the portal, they started out of high school as a 200-pound guy. The, I forget his name, but the tight end that played, uh, I believe at Iowa, that was uh, – is the tight end now with the 49ers. He was like 200 pounds out of high school. He was a receiver. He just kept getting bigger. He's 250, 260 now. You know, so some of those guys aren't as big headed about things and they end up with an opportunity just to play in a power five school and they're cool. They just want to fit in somewhere in the culture. That's where the Badgers have to hit it. Now, again, doesn't mean Evan Stewart is walking in the door to play at Camp Randall. But at the same time, they can get somebody maybe right below him that can go get 40 balls next year. And instead of winning six, seven games next year, they could win eight or nine. Because if you get an elite receiver, it changes your roster. And then maybe 
that same kind of personality. There's an edge rusher that's an outside linebacker, stand up jack guy. Or what. There's plenty of those guys that have done that at Wisconsin. I mean, JJ Watt was a transfer from Central Michigan, was a walk on. Like, you just have to find the guys that fit your program. I don't think it's as hard as people think, because especially with as multiple as defensive are, that's a little easier. The receiver spot's harder. Well, and the other thing I want to talk to you about is the shift with the portal. Now coaches have to also keep recruiting their own guys, oh, right? Oh, boy. Continue to feed those egos, find playing time for guys maybe at, at spots they don't want to. What what have you heard just from coaching, from, from staff, from programs, how difficult that process is? Well, some of the stuff that I've gotten today, I can't even like go into detail for fear of literally being sued or being – blackballed like it's it's nasty 100 percent, without any doubt there are players on wisconsin's roster right now that are attempted to be lured to other schools for money and that's cross board and the problem wisconsin has for the high school stuff i know they don't really buy high school kids with nil i don't know what they're doing with their older players do they have much of an nil package because if they don't they're gonna lose kids period yeah so they, they do have a pretty good – Wisconsin typically moves a little slower than other schools, right. but they, they also move with a little more purpose when it's, it gets going. They have a pretty good NIL group now, uh, Varsity Collective. It's pretty good. Um, but it, it's not for the high school, right? It, to your point, it's, it's about more retaining those, those veteran players that are on the roster. A lot of schools have kind of went that. Kirby, Nick, uh, Marcus Freeman, a lot of guys, Penn State's that way. They don't want to piss off the guys that have already been there and been through the offseason horrendous workout process because it's not fun by paying somebody who hasn't played it down in college football. I get it. So if you're going to do that, you can't miss, though. You can't offer a kid X and then last minute somebody comes along and says, well, if you transfer, we'll give you Y and it's better than you losing. Then you got nothing. That's the only fear I have. But the first point, you have to just talk to your kids. The new process, from what I've been told, is that like you re-recruit your kid? Like there are certain personalities you just know they're they're always going to want. There's nothing you can do about it. that's who they are. And I'm sure there are a few of those kids that play for the Badgers too, but I doubt as many. Like LSU kids, that's different. <laughs> so you have to look at it from a realistic perspective. Does Wisconsin have as hard a time as Georgia SEC schools? Those kind of no. Miami kids. <laughs> I mean, let's get out of here. Bit of a wandering eye, you're telling me? Not wandering eye. They, they're sending out messages. Are you kidding me? It's a me society in South Florida, bro. But at the same time, once the kids get to a certain school, sometimes they just like it. You, you just have to go through each kid, even if it's not just you, the head coach. Your assistant staff's got to help with that. And during the year, they've got to be telling you, like, look, this kid's giving me the wrong vibe here. Mm -hmm. The head coach can't get blinded on Thanksgiving weekend before the game. Hey, man, just so you know, this is the fifth time in pregame warm-ups this kid doesn't look like he's ready to roll. There may be some concerns here. Oh, really? You know, I mean, you need to know these things ASAP. And Gee. if that's that's a fireball offense, by the way, if you don't know your own position and you're coaching it. But, yeah. Do you see coaching staff starting to make those type of calls? Like, hey, we got to get this guy some reps or he might leave in the offseason. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things. Like, um, it kind of works two ways. Number one, if you've got a guy that's pretty good and he's deservingly the starter, but he's not necessarily an NFL guy, like he's just a damn good college football player, that's fine. But the kid behind him that needs the reps because he's a three and out guy, if he figures it out, that's the tough situation because that guy's getting phone calls for NIL to go to the, the rival school. That guy's getting phone calls, you know, to go play at Bama or something, mm -hmm. wherever. Some booster that probably isn't even connected to school trying to help these kids find their way to other locations. That's where it gets unique. And if you can't play freshman early, it's a problem. I, I won't go into a lot of detail, but there's a couple of schools that hate each other. The coaches, they have the whole nine. One school was playing more freshmen than the other, and the other school had been using the, the portal more with the experienced guys. And they were telling recruits, if you go there, you got to wait behind the portal guys. And they were right. That school suddenly was playing freshman a little bit more. Interesting. Ah, yeah. It's amazing how that works. Because, I mean, those recruits after they hear that and call this, hey, it, they're going to tell that kid, like, look, I'm not coming unless I know. So I need to see something. So, yes, right. it does happen.
That's interesting. All right, we're, we're going to take a quick break, come back. We're going to talk about a potential impact defensive lineman the Badgers are after. They've offered him. He's coming up on a visit. We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the fastest growing daily fantasy platform in North America for a reason. It's because it's easy, it's simple to use, it's quick to make your picks. And you're no longer competing with a bunch of other hundreds and thousands of other people crunching numbers. On Prize Picks, you just log in. <clears throat> You can get in and out in 60 seconds. Make your picks. And your picks are just which players do you think are going to go over under statistical categories. That's all it is. You pick between two and six. And if you hit the money rolls in, that's it. There's there's nothing else to it. There's no more maintaining a bunch of different rosters or picks or competing in leagues. It's just you against the stats. Simple, fast, easy to use. That's why we use prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown college. Use code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's PrizePicks.com slash Locked On College. Use code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize Picks daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, let's keep going here with uh, Brian Smith, Locked On's recruiting insider. Brian, I want to shift to uh, this defense alignment that we, you and I talked about a little before the show. Riley Tolsma, um, 6'4", 255 pounds, coming in on a visit. Hillsdale College, like not not a big program yeah. there, but. What would you think of the film watching Riley? Well, first off, I know that school. That's a neat place. And I, I tell you what, the film reminds me in terms of like his body language, how well he uses his hands. There's some guys that are getting paid to play like he's been coached. So I'm not saying that, you know, he, he's already going to be bypassing the rest of his college career or something, but he's going to make an impact at the power five level somewhere. Could be the Badgers. Being from the state of Michigan, it's kind of a fit, obviously. Stand-up edge guy, 250-ish, that could move. He could put his hand in the dirt and come off, but he always gets the guy in front of him, gets their hands down. That's a win. You can be 200 pounds. If you just have knack with hand-eye coordination like this kid does, that's a good sign. Um, again, think about all the different guys that have walked on at Wisconsin, Iowa, Indiana, whatever – Programs in the Big Ten, you're like, well, this kid kind of looks like he could be something, but then they gained 40 pounds. You're like, oh, that's what this kid had to have been. How does he end up at that school? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's D2 or D3. I'm not sure which, but it's just down there in the corner of Michigan on the Ohio border. It's it's Nowheresville. It's a great story, but I have a feeling after seeing this film, Wisconsin's going to have a lot of competition. That would be my guess because the portal officially opens on December 4th, closes the 2nd of January, but the kids are putting their names in. His offer list is going to be pretty extensive. And Wisconsin, like we were talking, they need new linemen. Here's your chance. You don't get many pass rushers to go to play for the Badgers. Here's your guy. And he, I think he would be a plug and play. Yeah, the last two years he had seven sacks two years ago, six and a half last year, uh, 50 tackles. Uh, and one of the things we talked about with defense linemen is sometimes you just need numbers. You, you, you need to keep throwing bodies in there. We talked about this last year the, from the first time you've been on the show. Like, the best teams can rotate too deep across the defensive line. Well, if you look at the last month of college football, I mean, you just SEC, Pac-12, whatever Power 5 conference you want, you know the names of the schools that recruit better at D-line. How many of those teams won games, even if their quarterback was playing mediocre? Well, I can give you a hint which ones they were. Jalen Milrow at Georgia or at Alabama. The certain, that guy at Georgia is good anyway. It's probably why they're going to win it again. It's the schools that just get a bazillion D linemen because guys are going to get hurt, but they got more depth than you do. They got two injuries too, but you only had five good D linemen. They got nine. Right. That's it. It's just numbers. That's it. And that's why you have to recruit D line every single year. So I bitch about it on this show and every show I go on. There's a there's about 50 of them in the country each year, and there need to be about 600. Right. <laughs> It's a, just, scarce, it's a scarce resource, man. It's like finding oil somewhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, this is why D linemen are so coveted. I mean, Bobby Bowden used to talk about it. He didn't get enough. And I'm like, you got the number one defense in the country. And he would bitch about it. What does that tell you? So they're hard to find. They get beat up because they're in the trenches. And just the difference between getting that one more guy that's 250 and up that can move laterally, like break down and chase down a running back. It's the difference between seven and five and nine and three. You get two or three more of them, you can go to the playoff. It's just recruiting. I mean, I know Kirby Smart can coach, but my mom could roll the ball out there and coach Georgia's D line. 
it's not that hard. So right. it, it's insane how many guys that a few of these schools have. They just have more depth. Like Michigan's D-line this year, and they did a good job of coaching them. And I know all the signs deal with that. That's fundamentally sound football up there. They don't make errors. They got more guys that do it that way too. They, their depth got them over the top, and they got a couple of just stuffers in the middle. It's second and eight all day, brother. Mm-hmm. Give me those D linemen that you can rotate in and out, and I can show you a team that's got a chance to compete for the Big Ten title. Well, and Kirby has said the same. Like Kirby, Kirby talks all the time about recruiting. You don't. Well, I mean, that was the deal. Yep. We joke about it all the time on the recruiting trail. Like. There's only about 10 schools that D linemen really matter for the most part. It, it, those are the schools that are competing for titles. Well, let's talk about another spot. You and I have, have discussed a lot on this show as a big need for Wisconsin. Um, receiver. So really oh. interesting receiver the Badgers yeah. offered. Uh, Jaden Richardson, a D3 receiver coming out of Tufts. Um, I know exactly what Tufts is. I've coached against Tufts on the college basketball side. That, it's a really good academic school. Big receiver, 6'3", offered by Osho Washington. Uh, you assessed it on him. him. Uh, <laughs> thoughts on, thoughts on Jaden Richardson because he looks like the type of guy that the Badgers could certainly use a little bit more of. A little? <laughs> <laughs> he would be their best receiver right now. Uh, sometimes <laughs> these things happen. He fell through the cracks. He's from California, ends up at a small school in the Northeast. What are the odds of that? That's why college football, while I don't like the portal in general, this is a good example of what it's really meant for. The kid, that, okay, it didn't work out the first time around in terms of the level I should have been playing at. He certainly competed at a high level and dominated. But you watch him run, the way he runs the routes, and the way he's explosive before and after the catch, you're like, this kid can play anywhere. Yeah, I I think that he reminds me, I forget the kid's name, that transferred to North Carolina that missed like the first six games or whatever. He's like that kind of explosive. I mean, like, he's, he's got a chance to be all Big Ten in year one. And he'll be a one and done if he goes to the Big Ten. He's played two years. He'll be one and done. It's – it's what is – you know, maybe this is a better question for a, a whole segment because I feel like we could deep dive on this. But when it comes to landing guys like this, how is this different than the high school recruiting? Like, what are they – are they just selling you immediately come here, you play, you go to the NFL? Like, how – Walk me through how this is a little different for a coaching staff, trying to land a guy like that versus that four-star receiver coming out of high school. Depends on the school. Um, I'll use the Keon Coleman recruitment. He was the guy, they were like, look, we got Johnny over here on the other side. It's going to the NFL. If we get both of you, we're going to the playoff. Like then, I mean, it was pretty legit, obviously. Now a school like Wisconsin can say, you're going to be the dude. We can't really run our offense with what we have. We're kind of there, but it's going to take a little bit. You can accelerate that process and make us a Big Ten contender overnight. And he could. He's the kind of guy, I mean, like, this is an NFL player. Question is, does he want to be just the guy? Does he want to be a part of, like, a huge group of great receivers? Like, maybe he wants to go to LSU or something like that. I don't know. But whatever it is, Wisconsin has a different kind of selling point because the offense they run fits what he does. He's an inside or outside guy that's over six foot. They can really run. He's got huge hands, big wingspan. You can use him any way you want in a spread. I'm confident Wisconsin staff would figure that out. The only other thing is, does he want to take on that challenge? Because he's going to get doubled a lot if he goes to Wisconsin. they got to be able to sell him, we're going to get somebody else, so you're not just getting completely taken out of the game with double teams on every play. That's what other teams will recruit against them for, because that team like Alabama, that team like LSU or Michigan, they're going to say, you can help us win a title. There's different ways to look at it. So depends on what the young man wants, but Wisconsin, they have a pitch too. One of the things you mentioned about Richardson is we talked about Washington offered him, and you immediately said, if Washington likes him, I like him. Oh, sure. I, I think they've kind of figured out wide receiver. Yeah, uh, I think that's kind of the technique at certain schools. I'm not going to go into it, but there's a few coaches that A, have been fired today or in the last couple of days, and I know are going to get fired soon. Look, I'm just going to say it. They are there to recruit. They suck as coaches. They may know the information, but they can't get the kids to do it. So that means you suck. Mm-hmm. The, the guy, I have no idea who Washington's receiver coach is. I would take him right now. Even if he was a mediocre coach, because he gets the most out of his, I mean, like, for the love of mankind, every guy they put on the field produces. And it's and they've got a couple guys out, and they still went freaking on the field. Like, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. They were struggle busting at the end of the year. 
if it wasn't for the receiver coach and how those receivers make big plays, they would have lost four games. Their defense is mediocre. But they're 12 and 0. The game has completely changed. Used to be outside the numbers was the bonus. Now, if you don't have a playmaker outside that teams have to account for on each and every play, you have no chance to go in and do anything in the playoff. I mean, that's even Nick Saban completely changed his offense. This kid, you know, I mean, McMillan and those got poke, those guys at Washington, he reminds me of them. Six two and up that makes precise cuts and runs away from people. Yes, please, all day. You sold me. Let's go. Let's get him. <laughs> I, I, I'm sold. All right, we'll take one more quick break, come back, talk a little bit about just what this quarterback landscape looks like in the portal. And maybe oh. if there's anybody Brian thinks the Wisconsin could take a stab at. That's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for friends of the show over at LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the number one hiring platform for hiring managers, employers, people looking for a job, just trying to expand your professional network. And again, we've talked about it. Every hire you make, every every decision you make as a hiring manager now is critically important for your company, for your job, for your organization. You need to get it right. And that's what LinkedIn Jobs is here for with screening tools to keep the people, the riffraff, out the door. Just get the qualified, good candidates in. And then you can parse through those people and it saves everybody time, saves them time, saves you time. Time is money. We all know this. That's why we use LinkedIn Jobs rated number one compared to leading competitors by small businesses. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Um, let's go back to Brian Smith. Let's keep this conversation going. Uh, Brian, let, let's talk quarterback. So, I'm not, we've had a lot of discussions internally. I actually have a poll running right now with Badger fans. Should we go back in the portal to find a veteran? Should we not? But what does the quarterback landscape look like this year on the portal? Maybe compared to last year, is it a good crop? Is it not? Where, where are we at on the quarterback landscape here? Down. It's definitely down. The, here's the caveat about two. Number one, it's not officially open yet, so we're not sure of everybody. And number two, if you just think about the teams that are normally at the top. Bama's quarterback's coming back. Georgia's kid might leave. Mm -hmm. It's bad for college football in one way if he leaves because then he, they're in the portal and it's easier for Georgia. But, you know, Georgia gets a returning quarterback. That's not good for college football next year either. Depends on your perspective. But there's a handful of teams that really are going to need a quarterback that kind of have tradition. Does Tennessee take one? I mean, they had a great situation last year. This year went oof, sideways. Michigan, McCarthy might leave. There's all kinds of things. I mean, I've even heard somebody say, I wonder if Ohio State will take one. Like, wow, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it depends on how you want to look at it because how watered down will the market be if those big box schools get into that market? The guy that I – and there's a handful that are already in. Van Dyke from mm -hmm. Miami, big arm. I've heard of Louisville with him. He would be a good fit. Uh, obviously, he needs to figure out the quarterback uh, throwing to the wrong team thing. He's got 12 of those this year. That's a, that's a no-no. Problem. But, uh, yeah. But there's only a handful that have been in already. A.J. Swan is the kid I'm interested in if he might go to Wisconsin, and here's why. He was banged up this year. He was at Vanderbilt. Started as a freshman. I just couldn't stay healthy this year. Elite student, obviously elite school. He would run that offense perfectly for Wisconsin. Would they do that? Somebody like him that has more than one year would be interesting. There's a couple other kids that I'm waiting to see if they, if, I'm not going to say names, but I expect them to get in. And that's where the NIL comes in. And I don't know what Wisconsin will do if they would spend, because we're talking up, upwards six figure stuff, if not seven. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's reality. And how that works before anybody asks, there are certain companies that pay part of that, like Beats from Dre, huge contract. Like, Sam Hartman's got the entire team at Notre Dame got their headsets and stuff. You know, I mean, it, it, there's all kinds of deals like that for some of these big box schools at quarterback. If I assume Wisconsin's doing the same thing, this isn't a, like, you know, a secret. They could get one of those guys for a year. You're going to have to risk losing a kid because you're probably going to lose a quarterback pretty much every year to transfer anyway. When was the last time Wisconsin went more than one season without a quarterback transfer? Because kids just don't want to wait. Mm -hmm. So I think they should go after him. Swan is one kid I would look at. I mean, you could think about Van Dyke. He, he's a definitely a guy that can run that offense, but he's not a runner. You have to throw it a little bit more. But there's somebody for him. 
And there's this hint. There are a few guys that I'm waiting to see if they get in the portal. I'm not going to mention names, but it opens next Monday. Well, and that's that's the biggest concern when when I talk about because I I'm personally of the opinion they should go find a veteran quarterback to help push the room or at least to provide more competition. But people, fans say, well, you're going to lose the younger kids. You're going to lose the four star retro freshmen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are. I mean, that that's just the price of, of kind of doing business in the portal, right? They're going to lose him anyway. If he's not starting next year, he's leaving. Mm-hmm. Old school fans, Badgers or otherwise, want a junior at the earliest to be starting. And I get it. He'll come from the portal. If you're not starting and you're a four-star kid as a sophomore, you're gone. It's terrible advice almost every time. They're still going to leave. There is no fixing it. They're still going to leave. You might as well have the experienced quarterback. The kid doesn't like it, hit the road. I mean, it's just where we're at. Um, the people around some of these kids that are so-called giving them advice, oh, boy. The stories, no. yeah, I can't get into a lot of it, but it's horrific. Okay, we, it's horrific. We have to do a, a Locked on Badgers after dark with some shots of tequila and get you to spill the secrets at some point in the future. Oh, I don't want you to have to be in the courtroom with me. <laughs> I love it. Maybe no, we'll I'm not. It. I'm not even trying to be funny. It's bad stuff, man. Bad no, I believe stuff. it. All right, we're going to wrap it there. He is Brian Smith. He is a Lockdown's recruiting insider. Great insight, as always, coming from Brian Smith. Thank you for everybody tuning in on Wisconsin. we got a bunch more content, including potentially an interview with a, a basketball player tomorrow on the current roster. That's going to be fun. And then a bunch more content coming up this week. So on Wisconsin, and we'll talk later.